There are exceptions, and I'm going to get into some of these things later as I get into my sanding demo. But basically, that is why we go beyond the 150. The issue with doing that is we are sanding shut the wood cells that are on the lathe by going to these finer grits of sandpaper. For the most part, that's not a big issue. There are some exceptions, and I'll try and get into this in a little bit, but just be aware, once you go beyond 180, if you continue, we are actually closing up some of those cells. And so, as we know, wood opens and closes. It may present a little bit of an issue later, and I'll give you some suggestions on how you get around that. Okay, uh, some basic finishes you should know about sanding. If you finish the outside, you should finish the inside. Uh, where's Brian? Brian made a beautiful purple heart and walnut table. I was out at his house a couple of weeks ago. He showed it to me. When he, when he finished the top, you finish the bottom of the table. Why? Because wood is a living thing. The cells move differently if they're not totally sealed up. That doesn't mean you need to put the same amount of coats on the top as you do on the bottom, but if you're doing the top of a table, you need to do the bottom of the table so it's sealed. This is a piece that I w was working on. If you notice the bottom has a single coat, uh, and the top is where the beauty's at. I try to to make it look a little differently. The bottom of the table, the top of the table in this instance, because I think the beauty in the bottom is best not too finished. But that's my opinion, and what I'm hoping to try and teach some of you guys today is, <laughs> is to be thinking of things like that. Uh, that's unusual, but that's an unusual piece of wood, too. Uh, something else that I would highly recommend is that when you open a can, when you open a can of finish, the first thing I would recommend that you do is put some holes inside the rim all the way around. Can you see this, Mike? Yeah, you can see that all right. Basically, what you're doing is you're preventing buildup. A painter many, many years ago taught me that. Uh, probably like a lot of people in here, I started out building furniture, that type of thing. But I would highly recommend that you do that the very first thing you do. Uh, some of these cans really uh, get a lot of buildup fairly quick and that eliminates a big percentage of it. Something else that's very important is once that can is opened, to stir. Most of the finishes, and there are exceptions then, <laughs> but in general, most of the finishes are a combination of, of several things. And even if it's, say, simply a urethane, the difference between the finish on a urethane, between being a satin and a gloss, will cause it to settle, in particular satins really need to be stirred very well, but just get in the habit of once you open your can to stir very well and get everything mixed up. And this is every time you open it because it doesn't take long to settle back to the bottom. Dan? Don't shake, Don't shake exactly. Stir. <laughs> With one martini, right? <laughs> Mark? No, it, it, what it does is allows it to... It, it's, in, it's the rim of the can. It's where the lid goes down. And that, what it does is allow all the finishes to go back and mix with its brothers and sisters rather than build up there. And by the time you use it six or seven times, then you can't get your lid on. Okay, something else that um, you need to be aware of is that 
no matter what kind of finish that you put on, all woods, and that's not totally true, there's black wood and there's amity that aren't going to change, but all other woods typically darken, but they will continue to change over time, no matter what you do to them. Historically, the two woods that look best as they're aging are mahogany and cherry, and duh, guess what most furniture has been made out of for hundreds of years. So don't be uh, alarmed. Uh, some of the ones that do it probably faster than anything else are uh, box elder, if you've got some red in it, those type of things go away usually within a few years. We're not talking months, we're talking years. But the woods will darken, they will change. This is a piece that I did about 10 years ago. Of course, nobody but me saw it then, but this is Norfolk Island pine, but most obviously the grays have deepened considerably, and in another 10 years, I'm sure they'll be darker yet. Uh, it, it's just gonna happen, and there's nothing that you could do about it to prevent that. No matter what finish you use, the wood's gonna change. It's a living thing, it does that. We change when we die, wood's gonna, <laughs> wood's gonna continue change too. <laughs> Typ typically, most woods darken, yes. Mm. Uh, those are general adages about finishing that I have picked up over a lot of years, like I say, there's furniture builders in here. Um, I was into a box craze about 20 some years ago. And by the way, when we were out of Bryant's, he had some nice boxes that he had been building there. And I got to working with a, a company called General Finish Company. And it is a company that I have really grown to respect, admire, and have had just tremendous satisfaction with the product. And so for the most part, I have used general finished products. The first one and the one I've been taking the lid off and on most of the time is, is the one I use the most of. It's called Armor Seal. It's, uh, it's a combination of urethane and tongue oil. It's a very, um, very strong finish. It's something you could, you could use on cabinets, you could use it on tables, which I have. Um, so why do I use it on wood turning? I like the way it goes on, uh, is probably the, the biggest reason. And it has a warm amber finish which I really like. It has kind of a hand rub finish, what I really like. And the most important thing, it's, it's a heavy finish, so you could get a lot of depth in your finishes. Sometimes they recommend three coats. I've gone as many as seven. Uh, just trying to build the depth of what I'm finishing. And what I would try to get all of you to do is to not only work on your tool usage, but work on your eye usage. Because what I see and what you see is different doesn't mean what I see is right and what you see is not right. But the better that you can improve your vision, your eye sight of what you're trying to do, the attention to detail, the happier you're going to be with your end products. The only place I know of is, is through craft supply, packer supply, wood, you know, woodcraft. There are, there are definite, with this particular product, you only have three choices. You have satin, you have semi-gloss, and you have gloss. Once again, I have people tell me um, including my mentor, he only likes one finish. <laughs> Dr. Lawrence will tell you satin or dull matte is what he likes. 
our illustrious president, he goes to the other extreme. He, he kind of likes to show off, so he's glossy. What I do, and there's a couple of products there, I try to look at what I have created, and then I try to f use my eyes to determine how much gloss do I want that. Do I want that to be fairly flat? Uh, and my rule of thumb is generally, if th the showier something is, normally the glossier I want it. Uh, Buckeye Burl, which I don't know how many of you turned Buckeye Burl in here, probably my favorite wood, but it, it has a lot of, it could be from yellow to grays with a lot of Buckeye in it that really shows off. I think it needs to be fairly shiny so that you can appreciate, you know, the Buckeyes and the quality of wood. That doesn't mean I'm right and you're not right. It's just I, I try to base my finished colors on what the piece of wood talks to me and says. But they have been around since the 20s. The first time I ever had an issue, I called the company and I was shocked. Somebody answered the phone that actually knew what they were talking about. <laughs> And in that 20 years, I have called them a number of times, and I've always had the same response. Um, the, I have used a piece of this on Coca-Cola at one time, and I had used it on Coca-Cola before, but for whatever reason, I would assume the Coca-Cola hadn't aged as much. It was more oily than normal, whatever, I could not get this to dry on. They not only gave me a solution for how to remedy the problem, he sent me a sample of something else to use at no charge to try it. I mean, to me, that's, that's mind-boggling in today's society. So I'm putting a plug in for him today. It's my two cents worth. So at some point, Rich, I have some samples for you to put at the raffle table. Um, my favorite finish, there's some negatives too. Uh, first, there's an odor. Anytime you use an oil-based product, you've got an odor. It's not offensive to me. Some people may find it offensive. Uh, it's slow to dry. Um, Basically, you're waiting 24 hours before you put another coat on it. I was struggling with a Valentine's Day present this year, and I was talking to our illustrious president. <laughs> this was Thursday before Saturday. <laughs> I had uh, plan A, B, C, and D had all failed, and I knew what she was doing, which is something pretty nice. Usually we don't do much, but since she had started the precedent, I needed to reciprocate. So I'm down to plan D, and I asked him if he had any suggestions, and he gave me a pretty good suggestion. <laughs> but the problem was, I told him, he told me to make her something, make her a box and put in little slips of paper of all the reasons I love her, which was a great idea, but I said, it takes a week for me to put my finishes on. <laughs> and he, as you would expect, came back with something pretty. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I did use part of his idea, by the way, and it, it was a success. But that is a drawback. I mean, typically it takes me a week to put a finish on something. Not everybody wants to have that patience. Uh, I mean, even, even three days. Weather has a big variance on drying time. You know, when it's winter time, if it's raining, things just don't dry. So. And the other negative is the one I expressed. Sometimes oily woods, uh, like the exotics, uh, they just won't dry. So that's, that's some negatives to it. What I would recommend is all of you, one of the important things about finishing is have a means of letting them set so they could dry. Uh, obviously, if I'm doing a bowl, you could always do the bottom, turn it over, and do the top. But if I'm spending 12 hour, or 24 hours between, 
then I'm gone up to two weeks, which is kind of ridiculous. So usually what I do if it's, it's a bowl or something uh, is just take like little pen blanks, put three pen blanks, set it down on it, and you can finish the whole thing. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? Uh, they have, I have some little tripod devices which only put like uh, probably a pencil lead, you know, that you could put under if it's fairly stationary, you could use something like that. Um, several guys in here, including one of them doing the demonstration later, has a wife like mine that she always has about 600 projects lined out for us to do. <laughs> and they very seldom involve one at a time. So uh, these, this is something real easy. I made four of these for Christmas because I had to do lots of pizza cutters. So they're real easy to do to set on here. Um, I'll show you another example of, of something in a minute when we get to it. But the way this finish is applied just take a soft cloth. By the way, this is uh, black palm wood, which I am working on. We talked about things that are not, uh, it's not a real good wood to turn. It's very, very fibrous. It's kind of cool looking, but it is very rough just because of natural tendency of the wood. The problem with all oil finishes is that once you get down about half empty, you've got a, you've got a problem that you need to deal with. And this is Bloxygen. It's just a, a spray can that once you get say at least 40 percent down you need every time you open that can you need to put this in because it's keeping everything to the top otherwise the oil will start to crust over you could put clean gravel or something in there keeping the the thing full if you wanted to but indefinitely uh until it gets down where uh it needs to be treated because it's gonna it's gonna settle on its own it has enough oxygen has enough air in there that it's going to do what it's supposed to do and that's get hard. Uh, about, I don't know, six, seven years ago, maybe not that long ago, they came out with exact same product called Seal of Cell Clear and a guy from Craft Supply put me onto this when I had ordered, you know, some finishes for myself. And this is exactly the same product but it's only about his third the consistency. So this is like a sealer product to put on first. And I have been very, very happy doing that simply for that reason. Uh, because as I talked about earlier, some of the times the cells are, are you have sanded the cells close and then they're going to open up. So anytime between coats, um, I always would do a little bit of sanding, but it seemed like on like on spalted woods, I'd have to do a lot more because the the, the woods would change. It it didn't matter in the finished product stand, you know. It, it it you get a good hard solid finish, but this makes that particular instance much easier. Gary. I, I just use one, and, and basically it's just a, a base, I'd call it like a sealer coat, uh, and it seems like it's eliminated, while we're talking about sanding in between coats real quick, and I'm going way over my a lot of times, but um, what General Finish recommends is a Klings 420 grit softback sanding sponge is what they their recommendation in between their coats what i have always used this is i don't know 600 but it could be 80 just as well i turn it over and i use the back and it, it has been very satisfactory of uh, just knocking the rough spots if there are any off 
And it's also pretty inexpensive, which my mentor was very good at teaching me to try to <laughs> save money whenever he could, Doc. <laughs> so my question. I, I have not been happy with steel wool, um, especially, I guess it started back in my, when I was making furniture, it seemed like if you were having some open grain woods that, that the steel wood would, would get a little bit hung up in there uh, and leave little residues that would, would be between and I wouldn't see them until I put the next coat on. So there's certainly no reason you can't. I mean, that's what it's designed for, but, but I haven't been happy with it. How many of you have the Beale system? All right, if you don't have the Beale system, go out and buy the Beale system. It is so, I remember Stan, when we were, he's my mentor, and um, I turned Stan on to the Beale system years ago, and it makes such a, a tremendous difference. Um, this, this is the basics of the Beale system. There are three uh, different types of buffing wheels, and they're clearly marked. This is one for Tripoli, and that's the first step. The next step is what they call white diamond, which is white rouge. And the third step is canuber wax. It's on an, and, and these are all different types of material. They're not all the same. And I would advise simply not going to Grizzly and trying to make up a kit, but to go ahead and break the bank and order this from Packard or Craft Supply. It's about, uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend, the, I wouldn't recommend that oh, okay. all three on one piece because you can't really get there to do a bowl if you've got a good sized bowl. The, there are different ways to, to mount these, and the way I do it is I bought the shaft that fits on a one-third horsepower motor, an old washing machine motor or something, which I have mounted on a bench, and it has an extension, and it fits on there, and I turn it on, and make sure you're holding onto the bowl, and make sure you know what direction this thing's going, and don't let it rip it out of your hands and throw it across the room, because you've got a lot of time invested at this point. But uh, I'm going to show you what this thing is capable of doing. This is a piece of coca bola that I turned yesterday and it's just to demonstrate how to finish something that's small like a bottle stopper. First thing you have to do is charge this with the Tripoli. And then this is the fun part. And the idea is to get it going as fast as you can in one direction and have the drill go in the other direction. And that's is going from a 320 grit to something that's pretty spectacular. The next step to finish that, if it's going to be handled, is to use something like uh, shell of wax polish. And this is pretty pricey stuff. Um, shell of wax, is about, well you can get the two ounce version of this for about, I think it's around ten dollars, but otherwise it's like thirty something for the larger container. But it's pretty good, and um, it does a pretty good job. Is that a <coughs> Excuse me. It's a finish. It's a friction finish, like my lands and others. Now, the neat thing about the Beale system is it comes not only in, in uh, the type that I would mount on a motor, 
You can also get it so you can put it on your lathe and just have it on the headstock and buff out your bowl without having to get another motor. Another thing that they make are these round um, buffers to go inside the bowl. And you can again, it screws, has a screw mount, and this is a five inch, this is a four inch. Anyway, if you get on Craft Supply or Packard, you can find all of those buffs. And what I do is I usually use water locks. And water locks is pretty good, except it's got a couple of characteristics that uh, you have to be careful about. And that's after you put on probably two coats minimum, three if you've got the time and the patience. But it's one of those that you wipe on, wipe off. Do not throw the rags in a corner of your shop, or you may not have your shop, because they're very susceptible to spon spontaneous combustion. So uh, be careful with water locks in that regard. I like using water locks. It's uh, very forgiving. It's an easy finish. Wipe it on, wipe it off, let it set up for a day, and then you can buff it. And it has a beautiful satin finish that I really like. Let me mention um, additional finishes for small items. Besides just using the buffing wheel and the sealers, you can make some of your own um, mixtures. And if anybody's been out there and seen Captain Eddie Castellin, he's got some fabulous uh, YouTube videos. And he has a uh, couple of different mixtures, and one of which is sanding wax. And this is neat. This is just beeswax and mineral oil. And I'm going to hand that around. You can use that with sanding, or you can also use it as a finish on something like a spatula or something you're going to use in the kitchen. Captain Eddie Castellin, C-A-S-T-E-L-I-N. And um, I have a couple of his recipes right here on sanding wax and his OB shine juice that he uses, which is a mixture of shellac, boiled linseed oil, and denatured alcohol. One other thing I found, and I'll leave these up here for anybody who wants one. Um, if your wax ever dries out, um, turpentine is primarily the solvent that is used to break down wax. Not mineral spirits, not lacquer thinner, but turpentine. I make my own, uh, I call it Bob's Rotten Finish. It's a mixture of beeswax, carnauba wax, um, turpentine, and a little bit of rotten stone. And the rotten stone is the abrasive. And it's good for doing pens and bottle stoppers and small items. Um, one of the other things that, that I do that after I finished something, and this is a little bit of a trick, um, I tend to put a coat of black bison on it, and especially if it's going to an auction. It has a nice odor, and it's distinctive, and people pick it up, and invariably they'll smell the piece beyond just feeling the piece, and they'll pass it around, and anyway, that's just something you might want to consider. That's a wax. It's a, it's a uh, Liberon black bison. I, I buff it by hand, just like any other wax. Another wax that is, I think, superb is this Renaissance wax. Expensive, it's a microcrystalline wax, and it dries really quick. Put it on and take it off. 
and it stays on. And it does think, it even does a good job on leather. So, any questions about some of those? I told you I'd be a lot shorter. Yeah. The Liberon? I just put it on like I was putting on a piece of furniture and then wipe it off with a piece of flannel. You know, one of the products that recently came out in craft supply are these little finishing cloths. I don't know if you've seen them, they're like $17.95 or $20 an hour or something. Anybody have a 12 gauge shotgun? They're cleaning patches. That's all they are. So. Any other questions about finishing? My standard way of putting something together, a bowl, even a carved bowl, is water locks and the beel system to buff it out and to finish it. And just be real careful to make sure you're holding it properly because if you're doing a bowl and you catch the rim, it's utter disaster unless you're standing on a mattress or something. So. Also, if you make the uh, sanding wax, uh, go to Michael's, get yourself a pound of wax, use about half of it, and get yourself a bottle of mineral oil, melt the wax in a coffee can, in a pan of water, and I like to use my outdoor barbecue grill. My wife doesn't like me to do that in the kitchen, and you don't want to have a fire or a problem, and uh, then you mix it. Uh, after you let it set a little bit until it gels up. Then you put the mineral oil in, you squish it around in a Ziploc bag, and then cut off the bottom and squeeze it out into a container. And it does a fine job. Any other questions about finishing? Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Dave. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna talk to you about one finish only, and that's polycrylic, min, min wax polycrylic, water-based finish. And I want to share some driving principles with you because they're my driving principles. The finish is the piece. Remember that always. The finish is the piece. The finish will be no better than the foundation on which it is applied. And spend four times as much time on finishing than on turning the piece. When you've turned the piece, you've just gotten started. The real artistry is in the finish, I remember that. And why I use polyacrylic, actually I didn't even think about it, this was Priscilla's idea to use this on a, on a particular project. I use polyacrylic on light colored woods, like this maple piece right here, because it doesn't tend to amber the wood. And most finishes will eventually amber the wood. Now this might some, but very, very little. So, <clears throat> Here again, this is polyacrylic finish. These pieces on the table are all polyacrylic finish as well. Now, this is not a forgiving finish like your polys and your water locks and such. It really has a lot to do with application and how you, and how you apply it. Some things about polyacrylic, it is water and it will run like water if you put it on real thick. You need to know that. It will slightly raise the grain on the first coat, but light sanding at 320 will take that away. It must be applied as evenly as possible. And I think the uh, secret to applying polyacrylic is an artist brush. Go down to Hobby Lobby or Mardell's and some of those and get an artist brush one inch or a little bit smaller, very, very, very soft, very soft. You just can't do this with a regular paintbrush. You just will not get it on thin, uh, uh, smooth enough. It sets up very quickly. Uh, I, 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 use, uh, I use the laser all the time to apply the first coats of finish. And when you put your polyacrylic on there, about the third time around, it's already started to set up. So you've got to, got to move very quickly. We're gonna do that in just a second. Uh, do not overbrush. Uh, 
It's amazing how hard this finish is. You can sand on it, sand on it, and think it's gone, but it's not. It's still there. And it cleans up with soap and water. Now, guys, I'm going to share a secret with you <clears throat> that uh, nobody believed me until I shared out the fair the, uh, one year. And I said, watch. Now, your finishes have to be silky smooth. They really do. Now, not so much for the guys, for the girls. So when you have a bowl on display, say this is on display, and you watch and see what most women do. They will come up like this and get their little fingers and go just like this. Have you seen that before? Guys don't do that. Gals. Out the fair, three women a row did it. So they, wanna, they want that touch. They want that tactile feeling, that thing. They want to know if it's smooth. And a lot of times they don't even look. They kind of look away, kind of do this. <laughs> so watch. So you watch next time. So... <clears throat> Here, application is very, very important because if you don't, if you don't, uh, you're going to have a lot of sanding to do. Now, Priscilla told me not to open this can. She didn't want to pay for the carpet <laughs> if it spills. <laughs> but keep your brush loaded, pretty well loaded at all times. And I will tell you, the first coat doesn't look like anything. You're going to think, oh, gee, you know, <laughs> this isn't going to be anything. So, and most finishes, it's not the first coat, it's the second coat and the third coat that make a difference. Keep your brush loaded, and I just, I just start at the end and just get it on as fast as possible and as smoothly as possible. Keep the brush wet. You can back up as long as your brush is wet. No, it's got to be it's got to be uh, finer than that. Those natural bristles are. These are nylon, I think. But uh, will it work with a wipe-on application or not? I've never had good luck with a rag or anything like that. Okay. I've always had to use a brush. Um, now it sets up very very rapidly. It will tell you on the can. You can sand this in two hours. I like to let it set overnight to get really, really hard and just a light sanding. Um, but you can see it's not hard, it just has to be smooth. As long as your brush is wet, you can go, you can go over it. You, you do not have the lathe ready, No, no, I do it all by hand. <coughs> Saves your face mask. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do have a spray, and I actually have it. I've never tried to spray it. So, but yeah, there is a spray. It might be a better way to try it. Okay. What is that? What's that? This is spalted maple. Very spalted. <laughs> No, it was wrong. Just plain, just after yeah, so there, there it is. The first coat is on there. It's already drying. You see the little spot looks at that. Now, here again, in two hours, at least three hours, you actually can sand it and put on the second coat. If you let it sit overnight, it seems to be a little harder, sand it with 320. And then another secret, I buff, in nearly all my finishes, I buff between coats uh, with uh, Tripoli. Bob was talking about. Uh, do not use steel wool. Anybody guess why? Water base. You, if, you, if you buff that with steel wool, you get little fibers break off, then they rust, and you wonder where those rust marks came from. That's, uh, that's polyacrylic. Hard finish, beautiful finish when it's finished properly. Um, the, last, the last coat... Uh, by the way, nearly every one of the coats, I lightly touch with 320 between the coats, buff it with Tripoli, put the another, next coat on, two or three coats ought to do it, and then just buff it out with, with a Tripoli white diamond and wax. And that's, that's the kind of finish that you'll get. Okay? So where do you get it? Oh, you can get this Home Depot, Lowe's, just, just anywhere. Um, now, 
one, one of the uh, drawbacks from uh, it is water, and believe it or not, it will rust the can eventually. Okay, Mark? Uh, on, a, uh, on a piece that may get handled more often, how many coats would you suggest or you typically? Three. Three? Three should be plenty, yeah. Okay. <coughs> yes. What do you do if you find that you have a bubble in your finish after it dries? How would you... Uh, Just sand it. Just sand it. Three. Uh, this is... One thing about sanding, this is a very forgiving finish. You can sand it and put some more on, let it dry, sand it again. You can't tell that you passed it at all. Uh, yeah. So, I beat Bob Zanson and... <laughs> okay, thank you for your...